All right, so I'm in Dallas, Texas. I got kicked off the truck, but they got me a rental car to drive back home. All right, drivers, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. I got another story time for you guys. This one's coming from Sassy Woman Trucker. Yes, sir. She's here to talk about the time that she's with this trainer and she just feels that her whole ordeal dealing with this particular person was a horrible experience. Now she made a video previously to this video right here that's about to be spotlighted. So guys, go over to her channel, Sassy Woman Trucker, and let her know that Lockout Men sent you. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Now hold on. Okay, so story time. I have to tell you, yes, I did. If you saw my last video that said the trucking company lied to me, I did have a little meltdown. But at the end of the day, it wasn't the company, it was the trainer. It was that trainer who put me through hell. So, when I first got on the truck, he told me that I was his last trainee because he was quitting, so he had a new job. So he was not invested in my training at all, and it, and it showed. He was 100% inflexible, period. He kept me freezing in that damn truck the whole time. It was like 39 degrees. He would have the AC on and the fan the whole time. He only eat, ate fast food stopping at rest stops, not rest stops, the truck stops. So he didn't allow me to get any decent food. And his stupid sleep schedule had me sleep deprived. He would be in bed anywhere from five to seven o'clock. My curfew to get on that truck was seven o'clock. And he would get up at 1 a.m lollygagging for three hours and then we leave out at 4 a.m so with those three elements he was just a nightmare or so just to um tell you exactly like what was happening to make a long story short like i don't know i think it was a control issue but at the end of the day he tried to get me but he got got because they didn't know the company didn't know he was leaving they told they asked me, they was like, well, what do you mean your last trainee? And I was like, yeah, he got another job. But while we was out there, the other job called him and rescinded the offer because he had too many tickets and too many accidents. So he didn't have another job. But by the time I got done with his ass, he probably wish he had, he, he would have treated me better because he was taken care of. He was dealt, the company did stand behind me. So I appreciate that. But anyway, so we were having our issues every day, like, you know, I, I decided I was going to stop driving. He had told me it was going to take eight weeks when the company told me six. But he gets he got like an extra $1,000 plus for every week that I was out there. So the longer I was out there, the more money he made. So that's why I was going to take longer. Um, so like on the like, like last two days, actually three days, I was on the truck for six days. I decided I was going to stop driving. I was like, he's not training me. He was not invested in teaching me anything he didn't teach me anything all i did was drove and that was easy i could drive so i told him i wasn't driving anymore you getting paid extra for me to be out here you drive you make the money so anyway it was just horrible we went from missouri to california so while we were um we picked up our load in california it was like a high dollar load three o'clock in the afternoon i was like i'll drive let's just go because i wanted off of that truck and he wanted me off of that truck he was like, no, if we leave now, we can't stop for 200 miles. That's about four hours. And we, we need to stop by then. And I was like, why? I can drive. He had called the dispatcher and told the dispatcher, she's eating a salad. She don't know if she can make it. That was a lie. I could make it. What it was, was he admitted to, he was afraid that we wouldn't get a parking spot. And I was like, dude, I don't care. I'm driving. So I took that truck. He reserved $17 parking spot. We got there at 815. There was plenty of parking spots. He was so freaked out because he was used to his schedule. I'm like, this dude, he's been out here five years. He's been out there five years too long. It's some, a lot of nice truckers and a lot of weird truckers. And he was one of the weird ones. So I was like, dude, it's 815. So that was one issue. We get there. The only thing to eat, I don't know what was in that truck stop, but we passed, after 200 miles, I drove 239 miles. We had passed the city with all these spots. And I was like, ooh, I'm gonna get me some real food. We went past it to the rural one and I was pissed. The only thing to eat was a Mexican 
truck stand that had hot dogs. So he ordered four hot dogs. I ordered two hot dogs. Got on the truck. I ate part of that hot dog, and I don't know what happened to me. I ain't had a hot dog in like five years. That shit, I was pissed. When I said I went off on him, I was like, you know what? You are freaking selfish. I said, I'm tired of this bullshit. I was like, you got me out here trying to get diabetes, high blood pressure like you. When I couldn't sleep, he was like, I got these pills for you sleep. I don't want that. My stomach was hurting from eating junk food. He was like, I got these pills for you. You can do it. I was like, I don't want that. So he had all this medication laying around that truck. I, I got out of that truck that night. I stayed out like at one something in the morning in the truck stop area because I was just done with him. I, that next day, I said, I'm not driving anymore. I don't talk to me. I'm done. So it, it was just rough. He was set in his way so bad that he just, he tortured me. And that's what it was. My experience, I did have maybe some unreasonable expectations, but he made it a whole lot worse. So anyway, for two days, we didn't talk. He was driving me back. So Friday night, he got really mad because I wouldn't drive. I was like, you getting paid extra to drive, to, to teach me or whatever, you drive. He called in, to, I believe it was dispatch or something. He told them all these lies and stuff, said I refused to drive, which I did, but he didn't tell them why. So they was like, well, we need you off of that truck. We're going to get you a Greyhound. I had too much stuff. I just wouldn't ride no Greyhound. If me, Greyhound is unsafe. I was like, no, you want me off this truck? Somebody going to have to escort me off this truck or you going to give me a rental car. So I was done with him. I said, you know what? I don't even want to talk to you, go through no third party or nothing. Let me speak to somebody else. So they let me speak to somebody. I told him I got emails. I've been documenting what was how I was treated out there. I'm not getting on no Greyhound. So he decided to get me a rental car, which was cool. So he said, I'm going to drop you off in Dallas tomorrow. And then you could just drive yourself to Ohio. He drives, I mean, the whole time, like, just, it was the same BS. We weren't talking or anything. The last hour of the trip, why does he put down the window? He had had that air and that fan on, 39 degrees, 24 seven, but he puts the windows down on that last day. So I was like, you know what, he trying to be funny. And here's the kicker, we get in the lot, I'm waiting on my Uber to take me to the rental car. He orders Uber Eats. This car pulls up and I wanted to smack that food out of his mouth. I said the whole time I've been out here, all I wanted was some decent food. And he going to order him Uber Eats, but I never got to get anything. I was like, when I got off that truck, I was like, you know what? If I ever see you in the truck stop, I'm flattening your tires. I was just so over him. So that was the story. It wasn't the company. It was the trainer. Uh, and then not only that, the six days he was out there, he never took a shower. I did smell some nuts like two times. I was like, okay. Every time he got off that, he never took a bag or anything. He would disappear. He'd be in that, that uh, truck stop. I don't know what he was doing. He wore them same jeans. He might have changed the shirt, but that was just ridiculous. The flies that was in there, I would have ice uncovered, and he would spray Lysol to kill the flies. He wouldn't clean off the windows, and then he was like, oh, I didn't contaminate your ice. Where do you think that freaking, where, where do you think the particles went from in the air? Yes, you did. So it was just, it was just, it was just horrible. <laughs> Now, I don't know about you guys, but training with a trainer, a stranger, can be a daunting task. You know, both of y'all is strangers. Both of y'all need to adapt to one another. Both of y'all need to, to, to work cohesively in a small space. And you can't work in that small space if the respect between each other is not there. If the respect is not there, then there's gonna be problems. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know, it's just gonna be problems. You, you're a new driver and your first trainer might not be that trainer. I understand, it happens to me. When I first came out, my first trainer we didn't mesh well. We separated. We parted ways. I got a new trainer. He finished me out. I'm here today. The very first trainer that you're going to get may or may not be that trainer. I'm just saying. But in this situation right here, I, 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 I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> Hell of a story. That, that's all I can say. Hell of a story. Her story is up for debate. You know, a lot of, a lot of one-sided here. <laughs> That's all I can say. You know, there's always two sides to every story. 
and unfortunately we're not able to hear the the trainer side of the story of what went on with this particular female driver trainee right now but it is <laughs> nevertheless it's, it was a it was a very interesting story i i want you guys to just you know open up the conversations in the comments below and and you tell me you know was the story convincing to you 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 know do you feel that she you know probably oversaturated the story i don't know i don't know but this would be a great conversation with her we would love to hear from you drivers if you have any stories man if you have any stories that you would like to share on the lockout men podcast slash recruiter call channel reach out to us the gmail is lockout men podcast guest at gmail.com thank you guys for listening make sure you subscribe the run the book the back of tequila mix it all up and i swear that i need none of them i pocket it in a bottle while